What's up, guys? I'm EJ, and I'm joined by Kendall again for another edition of our WandaVision episode recap, uh, discussion, review. Uh, this is this was a, a, a certainly a, a, a variation from what we've been seeing, Kendall. We've been seeing these kind of sitcom straight episodes that have been more or less what you see from a normal sitcom, with the exception of these kind of weird elements. And this one uh, was ended up being a flashback episode, even though technically the other ones you could say were flashback in regards to like style. But this was an actual flashback in the actual timeline and gave us a lot more details as to what exactly is happening um, in this show. So this was a very important episode. I'm glad uh, we could talk about it this week. Yeah, yeah. You know, when we in our in our uh, recap last week, um, you know, we talked about how we were probably going to we were probably going to get a flashback episode, and we were you know kind of hypothesizing on when we would see it. And I think we assumed that we would see the the flashback. We said around episode six or seven, maybe maybe seven or eight. Um, seven seemed like the sweet spot where I think we would have thought that we were going to get a flashback episode. Um, but we both agreed that we needed to get something like this, and uh, and I don't think any of us expected to get it. I don't think either of us were, uh, expected we were getting, we were going to get an episode four. Um, so quite the uh, surprise. This episode has been hyped up um, by the people on Wanda that worked on Wandavision uh, all week, and now I see why um, because they knew that this was going to be different than the rest. So um, yeah, yeah, this was certainly an interesting episode to dissect. Yeah, and it's funny, like, and I want to ask you, uh, I'll ask you towards the end whether or not it was the right idea to place it here. Um, but you're right, like, like I didn't, I did not expect it to be this early, though I will say as the week led up to it, and this was honestly the week where we probably saw the most promotional material for, you know, upcoming episodes that they've done, you know, besides, like, the first trailer. Um, this, this week, uh, they, they came out with a promo video, and it had what ended up being a lot of this episode in there, so... That's where I started to get to the conclusion later on this week. I was like, okay, this may be the episode. They're showing so much uh, images and, and stills and stuff from Monica Rambeau. They, this might be the beginning of us at least um, moving towards the, the present day to figure out what's going on. And that's essentially what, what, what ended up happening. So this, uh, let's, let's get to this show, man. This was a, 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 a quite a crazy episode. This was episode four of season one. I don't know if there will be a, 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 another season, but the only season we have right now of WandaVision... I- I was just gonna say, I, yeah. you know, I know we're we're gonna we're gonna start off. And I, I we're gonna start off with something that we talked about on our podcast, mm-hmm. but not on this on this show. And I wanted to ask you, yeah, um, you know, we talked about it on the podcast but the idea for Marvel to tell us that Monica Rambeau or that Geraldine was Monica Rambeau, that Tiana Paris was playing uh, Monica Rambeau. Yeah, on the podcast, I think we kind of agreed that you know probably not best. In terms of our viewing experience, but that there there were probably reasons why Marvel did it. Um, after seeing this episode and seeing that opening scene, uh, I feel a little strongly. I feel a little stronger about the idea that Marvel botched telling us that uh, Geraldine was Monica Rambeau because that scene would have been even better. It was already a great scene, but that scene would have been even crazier had we not known for a fact who Monica Rambeau uh, or who Geraldine was. Yeah, I, and I and I agree with that. And let's let's quickly talk about that first scene. So, episode starts with this uh, pretty chilling opening, um, where you know you see Monica, you know, wake up in a hospital and her body is being like reattached, essentially, um, being uh, de snapped. I guess is the word I would use to uh, to explain what happened. And, and you realize immediately when you start seeing her and other people start to reappear in these uh in these uh in this kind of like again like de snapping kind of scene that this is you know endgame this is this is the scene this is where hulk has now you know brought everybody back and everyone's reappearing and and that was a key scene because one it sets a timeline for where when this is all happening which i think i don't know if i expected this to be the timeline um i think it makes sense and we'll talk about it later but i didn't expect this to be post endgame pre spider-man far from home but that's what this is um because of when this is all taking place and and um so so we see this haunting scene and it's funny i, I wrote in my notes that to me that you know this movie this should be this series really is truly like to me like a, a, a definitely a distant cousin of spider-man because think about how spider-man um uh, far from home treated the blip quote-unquote it was funny it was all humor 
There was nothing really serious about it. And I think there was some criticism about that to some people that thought that that was a pretty horror, you know, horrific thing. And, you know, we were waiting to see what happens when people come back and they kind of took a joke of it. Um, it worked with that movie, though, I think. Here, you see the way more kind of like serious and scary kind of um, thing of the blip, you know, re- reality, hearing, yeah. re- reality of, of, of what actually, you know, happened for a lot of people. Yeah, if you're in a school play, it might not be a big deal. But you're in a hospital, you have people wondering where their loved ones are. Um, you know, one guy's asking for his wife. You probably, you know, his wife may be pregnant or something. Like, you don't know what the deal is. People are reappearing, you know, that were patients. Like, it was pretty scary. And it was a really great scene. It was a great idea to kind of put us back into, like, giving us an example of what it was like for these people to reappear. It wasn't just all fun and games like we saw in Spider-Man. It was also, you know, really serious and really heartbreaking in this sense because we learned that uh, Monica's mom, Maria, who had was expected to be discharged years before, you know, uh, when Monica had taken her to the hospital for a surgery, had passed away. And Monica had been disappeared all this time. So uh, I don't know what you thought about that scene, Kendall, but I thought that it was um, a great scene. And I... I do agree a little bit that had they we not known that was Monica Rambeau and that's how they started this scene, this that would have been a killer scene to start the show. Yeah, I mean, I you know I thought that it was an excellent scene. Uh, first of all, um, I agree with your assessment uh, of the blip um, and the the, the the like you said the chilling reality that we see uh, from some aspects of it, um, and I think that. Overall, like I didn't know, I didn't know what it was until she walks out of the room. When you see her kind of reappearing, I'm thinking like, oh, like what did Wanda do to her? Like Wanda really messed her up. Like now she's all like, you know, she's like, you know, particle or particles are all separating. What's stuff. crazy, Kendall, know. is and what's crazy is to me, like I jumped to Wanda too because the way she kind of was reappearing is a really famous shot of I think think is Avengers disassembled of like Wanda's body kind of like being like kind of like separated chopped for up. lack of a better term chopped up in the same way almost that, Mon- that that Monica came back so I thought this was also some Wanda stuff happening as well like I thought oh maybe this is the the after effects of her being brought yeah, out of that thing yeah. and now she's you know her body her body matter is not stable I totally yeah. agree and I, I went and right to she, those sta- that, that panel from uh, she those, walks that, out of the room and then someone else is reappearing and then you're like oh snap this is, yeah. the, this is the blip yeah exactly and, and, yeah, I mean, yeah, great, great, great job, great job by Tiana Paris, uh, who did an excellent job in that in that scene uh, in this episode. But, um, but yeah, you know, I, I think a little bit of a missed opportunity. Um, it's interesting because I, I believe the uh, editor, the editor in chief of uh, discussing film, he said that he heard that um, Falcon Winter Soldier are, is going to do something similar in terms of uh, addressing the blip uh, with some of their characters. Uh, so you know that that should be interesting. Um, and Kevin Feige said in an interview about a week or two ago that um, that he didn't want the blip to become you know the Battle of New York for Phase One and Phase Two, you know, or Phase Three, I guess it was whatever it was, uh, where we talked about the Battle of New York every five seconds, um, you know, and every every extended medium it was the Battle, oh, the Battle of New York. He said he didn't want the blip to be that. Well, that's what this felt like. Uh, this was obviously, it, this, it, in fact, seems a little more personal than any of the Battle of New York uh, Easter eggs that we got. So, um, you know, it will it'll be interesting to see how long Marvel plays that trope and how many people are going to be connected to the blip, quote unquote. But this was our first, um, uh, technically our second, like I said, we had Spider-Man home, uh, Far From Home, but really our first in the, in the, in the new MCU uh, iteration of what the post-blip world looks like. Um, but yeah, awesome scene. And then you see her going to sword. Um, and I mean that if you really, that that's when you realize, Oh, this is Marvel studios. I forgot, you know, like <laughs> for all the people that have watched WandaVision and are like, this is, this is a Marvel. What is this? You know, this episode, I think really brought you back to a traditional Marvel movie. Uh, and the quality, honestly, just the quali- yeah, quality oh, yeah. of, of the, of the show is movie. Yeah, and you know, it's what we thought of with Mandalorian, um, and people were excited that WandaVision was going to have a similar budget, and you know, you couldn't really tell the difference between this and a Marvel movie. Yeah, I mean, I tripped up by uh, calling this a movie, um, 
I think today it wasn't now I, I said it earlier today because like I mean it, it looked like a Marvel movie um, the way it was shot all the production level that went involved with it it looked like a Marvel movie I think if you're looking into the future of what the Disney plus Marvel project is going to look like you got to be really excited because this you know I think everyone thought okay a sitcom like you could do a sitcom with a shoestring budget and make it look good and even with her powers and things like that but like could you really do like a Marvel esque event so to speak and we saw I mean again the effects on the people that were being non unblipped were great the effects on the sword uh you know facility was great like it, I mean everything about this the, the, obviously the compound New Jersey no, none of they it looked like in, uh, none of it looked like anything you'd see on cable TV you know this was great they even had the budget to bring in uh Spectrum News I was shout out to Spectrum News my day job you saw that right yes yeah, Spectrum News New York <laughs> one did make an appearance. I was excited to see that. Um, but uh, but so one thing we saw, obviously you mentioned Sword, and we learned that Monica's uh, mom, Maria, was the, the founder of Sword, which yeah, is... Like your founder, Photon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was named Photon, which I thought was obviously a great uh, reference there. We'll see if that, you know, gets passed down in any way. But um, one, that's I saw someone make a good point that this is another uh, thing of female history in Marvel, because you had uh, Maria... Maria, um, yeah, sorry, not Maria Hill, um, Agent Carter, uh, Peggy Carter, starting S.H.I.E.L.D. here, um, uh, Monica having a long way to starting uh, S.W.O.R.D. and he learned that she was actually the, the director before she had died. So, um, this was actually probably one of, this probably been the most surprising element of this episode to me, was S.W.O.R.D., S.W.O.R.D.'s whole thing here. Because we, 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 cause we had the Marvel Universe now all this time. We've never heard of anything with Sword. Um, we've never heard uh, anything about obviously the Rambo's until uh, uh, Captain Marvel, and that was in the set in the nineties. And it just seemed like there, this has been an operation that's been going on for a long time, and this is our first introduction to it. So I don't know. This seems this was surprising to me. I, I'm I'm curious uh, when or if we'll get. A more of a history lesson as to how sword gets enter in, uh, gets uh, I, introduced because we we learned we knew shield we knew everything about shield we obviously been with shield you know back in center in terms of everything we could know we didn't know all this about sword but sword's been around for a long time and uh the the, the, the acting director says that you know monica's been running around there since she was a kid so i mean you're talking about decades yeah i um see it will it's interesting. I feel like we're gonna Captain Marvel two. I feel like in Captain Marvel two, we're gonna get a uh, flashback. You know, and I think they'll bring uh, Maria Rambo's character back. Um, and well, similar to the flashbacks that we've seen throughout the MCU with Shield, uh, where we see Peggy Carter running Shield, or you'll see Hank Pym involved with Shield, or Howard Stark. I think you're gonna get that, but with Monica Rambo or Maria Rambo rather. Uh, maybe you'll see Carol Danvers, maybe you won't, but if not, then you know, maybe you'll see Nick Fury, um, and maybe other characters that we don't know <laughs> that have been uh, agents of S.W.O.R.D. that may be uh, Marvel characters. So, um, I mean, this is, this is only like a, a, a drop in the bucket for, bringing, for introducing us to characters like Nova, you know, like, or other characters. Um, you know, there are X Men characters that you could you could have that have been associated with Sword, or uh, that maybe you know mutants in space, and you know different. To- there's plenty of different stories that they could tell with Sword, um, and there's, clearly there's a long history there. So that's what's interesting. And Jimmy Woo was talking to them like he knew it was it wasn't like they were off the grid. You know, they worked closely yeah. with law enforcement. Um, they seemed like they outrank. You know, they like they outrank, uh, you know, FBI or <laughs> yeah. they, they work hand in hand with FBI. So uh, it's it, yeah, it's a fascinating thing. Uh, the sword yeah. operation. Yeah, Jimmy's Jimmy's role in this episode is interesting because there's a couple of things about this was interesting. I agree, his kind of knowing and, and awareness of sword interesting to me. I was like, okay, wow, a, just a regular FBI agent. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I call him regular. I mean, he did deal with someone like uh, you know Ant Man, so maybe he is yeah. more special, but. And I did really like that, you know, while Randall Park, you know, did a great job again in this episode, you know, while he did have some, like, comedic things to him, I actually liked that, like, we got him, like, actually, like, at work, not, like, cracking jokes with, um, yeah. with, uh, you know, with uh, Paul Rudd, you know, you know, I, like, Scott Lang, you're so used to kind of that, like, back and forth, the fact that, like, 
like to see, oh, this is an FBI guy who's actually, you know, has a regular day job when he deals with other people and his job is really serious. And seeing him take that job seriously, I thought was great. But yeah, you mentioned like his kind of awareness of all this stuff. He knows who Sore is. And I was like, okay, an FBI person knows Sore. Didn't think that would be the case, but that's that's uh, cool. And they have actually have interactions with Sore. Like they, they actually called uh, Monica because they wanted uh, to use their tech yeah. to see what the heck was going on with this Westview place. Because they didn't want to enter. Knew about Wanda and Vision, which. You know, yes, he knew shock, exactly. That, you know, we didn't know that for a fact. Yeah, everyone, everyone in. Now, I guess. Now, I'm mean, getting really technical here, but I guess to me, in theory, if, if Vision and Wanda signed the accords, which I believe they did, then I, I guess. I don't believe it, Wanda did, right? Wasn't Wanda anti accords, or did she initially. Well, remember, she was. She was, she, she was team accords, and then, and then she ended up breaking out, you know? Yeah. So Perhaps, I. Yeah. Right, so, so in theory. If they signed their cores, then I guess we would know who they are. So right, right. in my right. head, I thought, okay, that's I that's I can see why you know law enforcement may know who these people are. But as a on good his question. whiteboard, he had he had scrolls written down. So yeah, scrolls written down. I wrote down some other stuff. Yeah, he asked why the why the hexagonal shape was there. Um, he asked why sitcoms and uh, is this in the same time and space? And then I wrote down. He wrote the row of scrolls. We didn't see the rest of the question, but that was the end of a question he had on his whiteboard. Um, so he knows scrolls, which again, that was shocking to me as well, because I was like, okay, FBI agents know about, know, know about scrolls. I would have assumed Sword may know, because I, like, I was like, how does Sword know? I was like, oh, well, you know, Monica, Ma- Maria Rambo is seen a scroll. So them yeah. knowing about scrolls, and now, of course, they're, and they work in space. So them knowing about scrolls makes a little more sense. FBI, I was a little surprised by that. I, I'm, I'm wondering if there'll be any explanation or, you know, you know, conversation about his familiarity in the FBI's familiarity with something like the scrolls. But I, I did, uh, I'm glad yeah. you pointed that out. I, I, I saw that on the second uh, watch I had on this episode. And then um, we also introduced to Darcy. Well, first of all, before we get into all that, I know we've jumped ahead a little bit. I watched the scene twice. I still feel like the scene with, with, uh, with Jimmy and with um, Monica and those cops is still, it's still confusing to me, and maybe it's supposed to be confusing. But what is the, supposed to be the understanding of what exactly is going on? Because yes, yeah, bizarre too. Yeah, it's bizarre. It took, yeah, it was bizarre. The most bizarre thing. I mean, in the show, it's been very bizarre. Yeah, like and especially in this episode, it's the most. It's the one thing. This episode is about making everything make sense. Yeah, it's still kind of it's still the one scene that really doesn't make any sense. It really, yeah, and, I, and I'm wondering. I don't know if, if they this... were playing up the joke. I feel like they were playing up the joke of like you, you know these cops are just you know what, you know they they don't know anything you know or like they're, they're ridiculous. Yeah, they, but yeah, it almost seemed a little too bizarre. Yeah, no, I think something was up, and I couldn't. I, you know, we'll see how the rest of the episode season goes, but that might be the one. You know, if I had a knock on this episode, that's one thing I'm looking at right now. You know, obviously the the scene where they get to these cops, the cops are like, um, you know, Westview doesn't exist. What do you mean doesn't exist? Well, the place that usually exists is Eastview, view, which was kind of weird, and and then they disappear, which I didn't understand. Like, yeah. okay, did they drive into that the vortex? Yeah, where did they even go? Yeah, like that was that was some weird editing and shooting. Um, and nothing was quite clear as to what happened. Um, and even the conversation in terms of what Monica and Jimmy deduced from that conversation wasn't completely clear to me either. And again, I Jimmy watched was just twice. like, I just the know whole town is missing. Him. Yeah, yeah. First of all, he's yeah. like, I know not to go in there, which I don't know what that means. Yeah, you don't even drive in there. Yeah, suspending disbelief a lot there, where it's just like, so you just didn't. You didn't what? Like I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Like why wouldn't you, didn't you drive? investigate? You're an FBI agent. You, you, you got to the you got to the sign and stopped. Like something is something was off completely about that. Uh, but again, this is Wandavision. I mean, something could be afoot. Like maybe there's a reason why there could be outside forces that are that are also at play in play. Yeah, there's a bit. There could be a multitude of reasons of why he wouldn't drive the 15 feet he would have needed to know that this was. There was an issue, like the idea that he got fifteen feet to the spot and never moved any closer, and it only wasn't until uh, uh, Monica went in that he would decide, okay, let me, oh, whoa, something's wrong. Why didn't what happened? And then again, there was no question about what happened to the police officers. We didn't see them dri- drive into the vortex. We didn't see them 
uh, you know, make a U-turn. Because at first I thought, okay, well, maybe they made a U-turn while they were talking. I wasn't paying attention. They drove the other way. But they're just not there. Uh, and they yeah. didn't seem to ask why they weren't there or anything either. So I don't know. that. We'll see how, the, again, I see how these episodes go. That that seemed to be like a scene that probably was a miss. And it was kind of bad because that's a big <laughs> scene that you got to nail. And the fact that I was so confused after it. And, twice. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, twice I, I watched and I still kind of didn't get almost anything. Maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe the comments would be like, "Oh, it was clear. You guys are missing something." But I didn't. I didn't have a clear reference of what's going on, other than again the cops somehow being unaware that Westview has ever existed, and that it used to be called Eastview somehow. And well, not that it. I, I don't know if that it used to be called Eastview as much as it was like the cops said, "We're from Eastview." You know, they were like, oh, "But like, where are you from?" Or something like, oh, you mean like we're from Eastview? Right. And it's like, they said, like, Westview's not a thing. Like, it doesn't exist. Yeah. And it was like, like, so it came out of thin air. And they're like, how do you know this? Like, we're from Eastview. And it's like, as if, like, it should be, like, it should be right next to each other. And, you know, this place isn't, this place isn't a thing. I don't know what this is. Yeah. Um, I, I, that's how I... Right. But it's still, I, it's still vague as, in terms of what that even means. What, it, it just, it appeared out of nowhere? Yeah. Or do they not remember? Yeah, it, it, it's all weird. And, I mean... To me, and the way the conversation that happens between Monica and Jimmy, I guess they, I deduce that they deduce that they, that these cops somehow don't remember this place existing. I feel like that's what Jimmy said. But again, it wasn't the most clear scene. And that was, again, a little bit of a misstep because that was a big scene. You obviously see the helicopter that was a drone go in. And then obviously you see that that, you know, that became something different. The drone looked a little different than whatever Wanda picked up. And then we start to learn why as we get more into the episode um, when we see the beekeeper, quote unquote, that we saw that ends up being, uh, you know, a, another sword agent who went in with a hazmat suit and that hazmat suit was turned into, a, you know, a beekeeper costume and he had bees all around him. Jimmy, during this, yeah. you know, scene with Darcy, who I'll get to in a second, you know, kind of said, oh, I guess, you know, I mean, you know, in terms of why the the uh, the uh, drone changed, he said, I mean, I guess he's got it go in with the rest of the production set you know like it doesn't make sense to have the futuristic drone in the 50s so make it look like a helicopter um perhaps that's why the beekeeper changed you know he, he couldn't be in a hazmat suit in the in the in the 50s or i mean he could but i guess maybe not the kind of suit that he was in so he made him into a beekeeper yeah. costume or at least something that was at least fit in with the rest of the setting even if it wasn't the idea that there were hazmat suits it doesn't make sense i've gotten a hazmat suit in like a suburban area but maybe there's a beekeeper in a suburban area so um so, so that was, uh, so those were interesting scenes. We got introduced to Darcy. Shout out to, uh, Kat Dennings, who reappeared. Um, we seen... Yeah, she, her. Job. yeah, she was, I mean, I thought, I thought, uh, Tiana, I thought Randall, and I thought Kat were all outstanding. I thought they were great. And to see, you know, side characters from Marvel kind of really take center stage in such a major way. And a show that they're also still side characters in. I mean, they're side characters in this show, but... You know, this episode is centered on them and see them kind of really. I, I didn't come in this episode being like, okay, I want to get more Wanda and like Vision. I was like totally invested in these three in their performances. I thought they were great. Um, Darcy, we, we and what I liked about the 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 nuance of Dar- of our cast performance and the writing is we see, you know, we see a, a maturity in just Darcy than the last Darcy time we saw her, which was in Dark, Dark World. I mean, you know, yeah, she has some of that wisecracking stuff with her and, and, and some of the kind of like, you know, you know, slick talking, but she's way more serious here. And we know that she went from intern in Dark World to now she's a, a doctorate now in in, uh, in astrophysics and physics. And, you know, her, her ability to kind of like uh, really understand these concepts that she comes in and she kind of seems to have a much better way of, of figuring out things that are going on. And she's the one that kind of ends up realizing that, uh, yeah. Somehow, this whatever's being fed to them is like is being fed to them as a TV as a TV show as a sitcom, and uh, she says that uh, she, she you know, one thing she did find she said she found reading was the cosmic micro background radiation the CMBR that she referenced, and uh, then the, the acting director swore then ends up saying that that was something that was a uh, you know it's, it's matter or something generating from that 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 originated from the Big Bang. So when I think of a source. I think about the Big Bang. I think about Infinity Stones. Uh, so, 
it, somehow the Mind Stone is still in play with this the, the situation. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it's interesting that that you picked that up. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, what the uh, you know, I'm not sure what the source uh, of this whole universe is. You know, I, whether or not there is some there is some sort of extra extra source out there. Um, you know, is it uh, or Wanda's powers based? You know, from that. I mean, or, I mean, we don't even know if she's in yet, <laughs> um, but we assume that she got her powers from an Infinity Stone, as far as we know. Um, and like. You know, is that is that what they're referencing, um, or is there something else there? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, who? I mean, who's this? Who knows for sure? I, I again, I get the impression um, that an Infinity Stone will probably be at play with what's going on with this, and, and especially considering you know when when we get to that you know final scene, which is now kind of us kind of going back to the scene of the crime. From last week, where it's you know Wanda and that confrontation with uh, with with Monica in this you know dream world, for lack of a better term, and uh, you know she confronts you know Monica, you know identifies her as some kind of intruder who shouldn't belong where they are, and uses her you know magic and her powers to you know shoot her out of the world, literally crashing her through her house, through multiple houses down the block and, and again out of the atmosphere and into the quote unquote real world. Um, but I bring up the stone again because when, you know, when vision comes back in, you know, we see an image that's going to be in my nightmares for, for probably a couple of weeks of, you know, vision coming back with those dead, dead look on his face and the, uh, the mind stones, you know, taken out of his head, uh, as one husband you know, and his indestructible head. Yeah. Well, what a, what a callback that was. Um, and, and we got a payoff. For that, for the, for that, to, to see that again, um, wow! I mean, and and, go, and and the episode ends up ending with you know Monica, you know, on the ground realizing that you know this is a world in her eyes that's been totally created by Wanda. Now we don't know for sure if somehow there is some kind of influence that's being set up, but they certainly are setting up the idea of like this is all Wanda. Wanda's a hundred percent behind everything. And and well, and now I think the rest of the season will be one them trying to get her out of it, but then two seeing if there is some kind of outside interference that's affecting her. So who or what that yeah. is will be the question. So we 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 still don't know what's the deal with Agnes because she wasn't yeah. identified. I was gonna say that's a great the- point. Yeah, everyone was identified except for Agnes. And and I don't believe Dottie either. I feel like Dottie wasn't. Was Dottie was not either. You know, those were the two. Everyone else is a person. Um, the rest of the the other two, Dottie and Agnes, have not been identified. Um, Dottie, when you rewatch that scene in the context of you know this episode, that scene with her and Wanda, she seemed like you know she was snapping out of it and was like gonna say like Who are you? Like you know like. Where am I, kind of thing, and then she's not back into reality because of what Wanda did or whatever. Um, so it makes you it makes you seem like she it makes it seem like she's not there intentionally. Um, it seems like she's being held hostage on some on some level as well. But they just haven't they they didn't seem, didn't seem like they identified her in this episode. Um, Agnes, on the other hand, seems like there's something up there. Uh, well, it's you can now. I'm done. I mean, I'm starting to get like you know. My conspiracy in head now is really starting to get crazier because, you know, I obviously I think that again I don't think it was an accident that those two characters were not identified, but I mean, right. isn't Agnes really being set up as a great, great red herring right now? I mean, to me, she is. Um, yeah. Not to say that that doesn't mean that you know she 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 won't end up being you know a lot of what's going on Somebody. here, but I mean, the only two. You know, the only scene where, you know, Jimmy or anybody gets through to Wanda a little bit, besides, I guess besides the beekeeper scene, is is that scene with Dottie. And yes, it did seem like Dottie was kind of like all over the place and lost as well. 
Um, and maybe she ends up being someone too, but you know, I kind of have my eye on her as someone who maybe is manipulating a lot of this as well, because as we kind of see from that episode, uh, you know, the world seems to kind of like revolve around Dottie. Like that's how it was, it was presented. So, if, yeah, if, you know, why would Wanda in a world that she creates, you know, put someone else on top pedestal? Everyone else is equal to her except for Dottie. So, yeah, again, it's not to say that doesn't mean that it's just some other person as well. And I'm just, you know, going conspiracy crazy. But, it, you know, I'm always looking for the twist. And, you know, to me, if it was only Agnes that wasn't identified, it would have been a little obvious. But, like, I was, okay, well, clearly we know where this is going. But the fact that they held out, too, I think some of that is disbelief. You know, make you think that, okay, maybe there's something going on with Dottie, too, and maybe there won't be anything. But... I think, well, what if there is something? And trying to think of, you know, what reason could that be? I mean, Dottie's the only person we've seen, um, like, you know, turn into, like, a regular color besides Vision. Like, her, she was bleeding. Uh, so that's, a, right. that's, that's, that's a, to me, an interesting suggestion. So, seeing her blood and then the, the elements that came in from the outside world, those were the only things that have... Uh, that that have shown this, any color, so like, so at least when they were in black and white, obviously. So, uh, yeah, Dottie's yeah, an interesting. She's an interesting character. I think there's a lot there, and I don't think we're anywhere close to knowing what the deals with her. But I'm not ruling out that she's behind all of this. It, it's to me this episode also told me or confirmed to me that like Marvel, like Marvel knows what, like they know what we're doing now. You know, like they know that the fans are gonna go, are gonna look at every last frame and an, and an, psych, and hyper analyze every last frame and every last word in the script. Um, and I, I say that because, and it's funny, like with the Mandalorian, you know, there's a show on Disney Plus called The Gallery, where the Mandalorian they they do the behind the scenes, and one of the creators of the Mandalorian, Dave Filoni. Um, guy we talk about on our Star Wars podcast, Imperial Broadcast, you can find on Spotify, uh, and, and anywhere you get your podcast. <laughs> but um, Dave Filoni talks about in that in that behind the scenes feature that he knew in season one of The Mandalorian that they put a shot of a guy's foot uh, with with a certain sound, and he knew that the, the fans were gonna were gonna be like, this is Boba Fett. Like, he says in the, in the thing that, like, he's talking to John Favreau, and he's like, oh, don't worry, the fans are going to be like, they're going to be thinking, oh, we're going to put this in, and they're going to think, oh, it's Boba Fett. And, like, they, you know, and obviously we know how that ended up being. But, like, it's a funny thing to show, to show, like, oh, like, Dave Filoni knows exactly what the fans are going to think. When, at the time, it seemed like a bit of a, a leap to even think that, you know? <laughs> like, it, was a, it seemed like a leap of speculation. And in this episode, I feel like we got, like, line after line of just, like, like, like uh, Randall Parks, Jimmy Woo, and Darcy, like being us, <laughs> you know, like kind of theorizing their own theories based yeah. on watching the show, something that we've done the last two or three episodes. So I thought that, that was fascinating. Like you said, the the what's the deal with the sitcoms? You know, they have written down why the sitcoms, why did why, why there a, a hexagonal, hexagonal shape? shape? Yeah, hexagonal shape. Yeah. You know, like these are things that people have been talking about, and Marvel knew that people were going to be talking about these, right? Things. And like the hexagonal shapes was kind of a, it was kind of a deep cut. It was kind of an inside baseball kind of thing. It wasn't like an obvious Easter egg. You're not why a beekeeper too. Like that was an obvious thing, but you know that was something that was a little more intricate. Um, so I just or like when Darcy mentions like why does it keep jumping decade to decade? Like that's something that we've been yeah. asking. Um, you know like why why a TV show and why does it keep doing this? So yeah, it's funny that clearly the show the showrunners and the writers. Uh, clearly, I have a great handle of what the the fan base, how they're going to react to each episode and each uh, each scene that they put in there. Um, it shows you everything that they put in there is intentional. Like, of course, every yeah. little detail, even things that throw, even things that are put in there to throw you off their scent is intentional. Yeah. You know, then nothing's being done yeah. by accident, especially in, a in, show in, like in the is that the showrunner has done. Uh, Jack Schaefer, she's talked about like they've asked her questions on. Like, you know, Quicksilver, the X Men, um, this and that, everything, any possible, you know, Mephisto, Nightmare, Grim Reaper, everything, and she's had the same. I can't answer. And some of that, you know, not not all of that stuff. They're asking about Magneto. 
she, you know, she can't answer all, and not all of that stuff is going to be true. Some of the stuff she can say, no, nah, it's not it. But yeah. she, she knows that it's it's part of it's part of the the speculation. Yeah, to keep the int- oh. you keep the the mystery yeah. alive and the intrigue alive. You have to kind of Magneto's not in it. She you can leave. say Magneto's not in it, but then that would just cross off. That crosses off with the op- okay, well, what's going that. on or what we're gonna see, and yeah, you want to leave the op- the, the options opportunities endless. So and she knows. That she's putting stuff in there, and Marvel's putting stuff in there to maybe make you think. Looks over the show, make, make you think. Magneto's going to show up, or Mephisto. They know people are going to be thinking this stuff. So, it, yeah, it's fascinating how they've, how they've crafted this show. I definitely feel like um, the cosmic micro background radiation could absolutely be the beginning to something involving the mutants. Or I've even seen the Fantastic Four on social media. Um, I wondered speaking of the fantastic four yeah. i wondered if them bringing in darcy lewis could have been an opportunity for them to introduce reed richards um or even mention reed richards. like should that character you know? be on, oh i just mentioned him okay. like they could have said like oh we couldn't get reed richards or something like that like <laughs> that could have yeah. been like because that's because that's what's funny about this i saw someone mention like this is the first time like in a normal marvel cinematic universe they would have called tony stark but yeah. Tony stark's not around anymore. So now yeah. they're kind of scrambling. Who are the experts? They don't know the experts. But I'm like, yeah. that would have been great to bring in Reed Richards to kind of make him the new kind of Tony Stark in that in that environment. So I thought that that was uh, interesting that they went with the Darcy Lewis guy. It makes sense, obviously. But um, they may have to end up explaining that with <laughs> Reed Richards not being called. Uh, yeah, and who, know, and who knows why V. Richards wouldn't have been called. He could be off planet. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. You know, or he might not be around in this timeline. Like, he may be in a different, he may be around in the 60s, for all we know. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, we all, you know, one thing we kind of glossed over here, but we learned today also that um, these scenes where something crazy happens or there's some kind of break in the system uh, are not. You know, no. Yeah, they're not in the show. You know, they get fast forwarded. They get f- just, just sl- yeah. slipped up. Like when uh, when uh, when um, Jimmy is trying to talk to Wanda through the radio. Uh, you know, right before all that stuff happens with the you know her breaking the glass and the bleeding and all that stuff, we don't see any of that. It just gets fast forwarded to like you know when she, you know Dottie's back to normal and then she walks off screen and that was it. And at first I was a little yeah. confused. I, that was another scene where I thought the shooting was a little weird because. They made it sound like to me that like Darcy was like omitting that this happened, which in the second thought view I thought okay maybe that's not what happened. She really did didn't know. She thought maybe it was just a glitch or something. Um, the second time then it happens that so when she told Jimmy that oh just nothing went wrong I thought is something up with Darcy like you know clearly something went wrong I don't know what she's seeing, but I guess you know I tried it then right. when I watched them in the second view when I tried to take myself my what my knowledge of the situation was out of it. And I, I think how I'm supposed to interpret it was, you know, she doesn't know why the, the skit show skipped just now. And even though we know the voice was coming through, I mean, she can't hear Jimmy through the TV. So, you know, she could think there's anything. And so she didn't maybe, maybe make note of it until the second time it happened. And that's when she was like, hey, it happened again. So uh, so I kind of got confused the first time I watched it. But, um, but that was also obviously a big deal. You know, we don't see anything involving... Uh, you know, Monica being shoved out the part out the out the, out the whole world. Um, yeah, what's even, that about? Even even, vi- even Vision coming coming in, we didn't see any of that happen. I'm sure if we, you know, they didn't show it. But I'm sure that that on TV, you probably didn't even see the Beekeeper. You probably never saw that. And we don't know where that guy is. I mean, we know Monica yeah. got shot through. Uh, all we heard was, uh, you know, you know, wanted to say no, and then, and then it fast forwarded in the show, which I guess in some way was kind of like a representation of what we would see in this episode for the when these what happens during these scenes but we didn't we don't know what happened to the beekeeper and um and we don't you're right we don't know uh how or why those moments can't be broadcasted like you would think that wanda wouldn't be able to control that that's why i mean that's why i mean you know i know last week i was leaning towards wanda's turned completely healed and in some ways i think maybe she still is turning heel but i definitely feel like some of these things that are happening, there's something else at foot. Something else. Someone else is pulling some strings here. Because how, like, how... I don't think she would have that kind of control. To be like, I know somebody is watching me. In fact, she didn't technically know until Monica showed up. So, so the, I know somebody's watching me and I know how to edit the show that I'm broadcasting. That I don't know I'm broadcasting. 
to show people, but I'm, I'm only going to show them what I want them to see. So, like, Do you think she's the villain? I, I'm moving off of that. You know, I, I was really hot on that last week that she's 100% the villain. I, I feel like, you know, they're really... They leaned into it way... I mean, they laid a lot of tea leaves out last week. And then to me, they really leaned into it today to make it seem like she's definitely the villain. I'm I'm leaning more towards there's someone... There's something else happening. That there's someone giving her this... Is push. Doctor Strange coming in? If Doctor Strange is in this, we don't know for a fact he is. We know that she's in Doctor Strange. Uh, Multiverse of Madness. If Doctor Strange comes in, like I feel like he's coming in to take her out or to calm her down at least you know like because whatever's happening like no 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 mere mortal can deal with this yeah to me <laughs> yeah i think that i know we talked about you know we also about in the podcast like who, who could possibly show up in this show you know because paul bettany made comments about being excited to work with an actor he hasn't worked with i mean i i think that we're gonna see doctor strange because as we're seeing with you know what sword is doing i mean this is way above their pay grade i mean you know, now we kind of have an idea of what sword is a little bit. I mean, they're 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 a clearly a you know well well oiled machine, so to speak. You know, they did mention how they've been some yeah. issues since the blip. You know, in terms of not really doing too many man made missions out of space because the astronauts either kind of skittish after all that happened, or the best ones they have aren't there anymore because they disappeared yeah. and now they're trying to get back on their their footing. Um, so they've been doing a lot of like drones and lots and a lot of robots into space and things like that. Uh, yeah. I feel like this is something that's way, way, way above their pay grade. It's what I see. Like this don't look like what they showed us. Sword capable of and who's running sword and everything. This is something like something that sword can handle. So I, I totally, yeah. I totally expect, um, I totally expect this to to go a different way and for someone else to have to intervene. And I, I think it's going to be Doctor Strange. That That's my gut, but who knows? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, a Doctor Strange appearance uh, obviously would be awesome, but it, it would also make a lot of sense in, in the show. Uh, given that, again, who else do you turn to <laughs> that be able to deal with this? I mean, you, did, you tried the science route, and the science route really is getting you, it's getting you uh, facts, but it's not going to help you at this point. So Doctor Strange might be the most powerful person you can you can send in there. Yeah, I don't think I mean, you know, I mean to be fair, Darcy did help him a lot with science to be fair. And it's kinda like it kinda goes back to that uh conversation between, you know, Tony and and Steven about, you know, science meeting magic and uh I think a lot of that usually we see a lot of that play out in this episode. But um All right. and I think that's probably a callback to that, to be honest. But um but yeah, I mean, going back to that question about you know, where is, what, what is going on with Wanda, you know, is she the villain? You know, they really want, I think they really want you to believe that she may be the villain that's turned heel here. I, like, even her saying that everything is, is under, she has everything under control. I mean, that's, that's taking really any responsibility from anyone else who could possibly be involved with this. And her saying think, that we can't leave. Yeah, we can't she leave. Like, Let's get out of here. She's like, no, yeah, she's like, no, we can't leave. This is our home. And, um, it's just saying that, you know, th- there is no other home now. This is where we live and this world that they've created. Yeah. And we see that Wanda's willing to use violence against anyone who knows that it's not real. It's not even like, I mean, it, it wasn't like, you know, Monica came in trying to fight or anything. It was just a reference yeah. that she knew was off. And that, that led to violence. That led to, you know, it wasn't a little, yeah. oh, well, let's talk this out, you know. So... So that I means they're leaving it all out there for her to be a heel. And I think that maybe a lot of people will now go hook, line, and sinker. But I'm actually not pulling back and saying, okay, it's smart. It's smart for them to do it this way because it makes you kind of lean off of wanting to know who else is it behind this. But I, I think that this, there is something else going on. doesn't mean that she hasn't, you know, really turned and there isn't something seriously wrong. Uh, but I, I think that there'll be, I think, a full circle turn in the end that she'll come back and realize whatever's going on is wrong and that they gotta fix this um i think we pretty much got to everything on this episode that i wanted to uh that i wanted to get to let's uh let's do let's do a grade here for for episode four of uh wandavision we interrupt this program um this was a good one i'm gonna give this one i'm gonna give this one an eight as well um this was really solid 
uh, I saw some people complaining about, you know, was this too early to do this? And I'll be honest, I, I could I could see that argument. I could see that, you know, this it's I'm like it was a good episode. It was well done. Again, besides some of the nitpicks I had uh, with certain scenes not coming through as clear when I think they need to be. But again, as you said, kind of this is your clear it up, clear it all up episode. You can't have a lot of things that just like pre- in their presentation don't make much sense. I don't think are supposed to be mystery. So that's a little bit of a it was a problem. But um, I thought the opening scene was killer. I thought the performances were killer. Um. Uh, shout out to Elizabeth Wilson too, who's killing this role. I mean, her scene with Monica at the end also was uh, uh, was gripping. I mean, her acting is uh, Elizabeth Wilson can act. We know that, but I mean, I think her acting in this whole show has been great. But see that that one eighty turn. I mean, we especially because during this episode. I mean, besides the little scene with you know Jimmy, like we see like those clips of like the show where she's all happy and. You blah, 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 you know, dancing yeah, around and stuff. And then too. you like, go to this, and, like, the, the scene we have from Wanda that's fully a scene is, like, her just, like, out for blood. Like, to see that yeah, flip from an actress, that I mean, that's, look, that's top The notch. other little reveal that we got was that, like, this show is going on constantly, and, like, yeah. it's, 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 there are, there are aspects of it that we haven't seen. Like, there's lost episodes, quote, unquote. Yeah, because there <laughs> you know, was, yeah, there was, so, there was some stuff where they were, like, dancing, and I was like, I don't remember that ever happening. Yeah, stuff that we didn't see, yeah. Yeah, which is smart, you know. Makes sense. Yeah, but yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, well, actually, before we do a score here, I had the people probably like, uh, you know, what's yeah, going on? you did. You. There's one. Yeah, I did. I did give a score. I give it an eight. Um, I like this episode. There's one thing I want to mention though before I, you give your score, is because I mentioned the timeline being super important. I wanted to make sure I got back to that. I feel like. The end of Spider-Man, um, Far From Home, I think takes a whole, could potentially take a whole different look and feel after watching this episode. I think anything involving J. Jonah Jameson, I think anything involving uh, with Homeboy, uh, Mysterio coming back and being part of the equation, like I think all that stuff. You know, it all came out of nowhere. None of it made all, a lot of sense because of what was going on. We were all really excited. You know, this is all happening in WandaVision in a place that's not too far from New York City. I'm just saying, pay attention to that. Pay attention to what that means for what happened with Far From Home. I'm not saying it's 100% going to be the case, but there's a lot of unanswered questions about how Far From Home ended that we just didn't, they didn't even try to answer. I wonder if we're gonna get some answers yeah. because of what we saw today. Yeah, yeah, that, that's an interesting, uh, that's an interesting connection there. Um, I, you know, I, I feel like, uh, yeah, I feel like Spider Man. You know, it'll be interesting to see how closely Marvel decides to connect the two, but, um, but we know that Spider Man is gonna be in, you know, you know, gonna gonna connect with Doctor Strange uh, and WandaVision as well. So, yeah, exactly. So that's why I'm telling somebody you. to pay attention. And again, this this uh, this show taking place before Spider-Man: Far From Home. Again, that's so. What what, what gave it away to, to you that this was definitely before Far From Home? Like, just, well, Peter exactly goes on a full vacation, and remember, uh, right. Homeboy from uh, Sword says it's only been three weeks. It's only been since, three weeks since she and woke up from the from the snap. Time, how much longer after the blip? It's not three weeks. It's more than that. I don't know how. I yeah, can't. I, I don't know. I don't know if they gave us official timeline. I have to maybe look that up. Someone online probably already found it by the time they watch this review. But it's right. it's got to be more than three weeks. And if you know, I, and I get the impression that like the whole operation that gets going in Westview is it's probably like a week or maybe a week and a half after whatever you know Monica going there three weeks after the blip. So. To me, the the timelines are could very well. To me, it looks like the reason why I bring that up is because to me, the timeline looked like they very well could be coinciding. That by the time uh, this overlapping. this yeah over and overlapping. By the time this is all over, this is happening around the same time Far From Home is ending. So this is where yeah. it's going to get very interesting. We need to all pay a lot of attention to what's going on. Um. Yeah. My uh my score for this episode, I'm gonna go nine out of ten. Um. Okay. You know, I think some of the I agree with some of the concerns that maybe it could have been a little early for this, but you know I think that there was also some some uneasy people out there that weren't as 
high on this show, and I think that this episode should help uh, ease some of their concerns about this not being your traditional Marvel series. Um, this is the kind of stuff that we, we had been talking about since the first episode that, you know, we would eventually get, you know, like, we knew that this was going to be sitcom. It's like, at some, some point, we were going to go back to the real world. It's going to feel more Marvel-esque. Uh, didn't expect it to be this soon, but, you know, for the people that were getting antsy, and I think after three episodes, there were quite a few people that were getting antsy, uh, this kind of brought them back into uh, reality. So, I mean, I thought it was, it was, a, it was a great attempt at a flashback episode. Um, had gave us, you know, I think, I mean, I think the opening scene with Monica Rambeau, um, her all the way up into like the the sword intro is is a, you know, is a cop, you know, it's it, I don't want to say it's an all time great Marvel scene, but it's it's up there. Man. It's great, yeah, it's it's yeah. it's legitimately it's even an all time great, great opening. I'll give, I'll give them that. I mean, it's an opening scene to a show, to an episode of a show, but it's an all time it's an all timer. I'm never gonna forget that one. Yeah. Um, so, you know, credit credit to Marvel on that because um, you know that was well done and then they botched letting us know that uh, Tiana Paris was playing Monica Rambeau but regardless uh, excellent execution in the episode um, 9 out of 10 wow and I agree that, that opening scene was incredible and again shout out to Tiana Paris who um, carried a, la- a large portion of the episode before um, she doesn't was... it make you excited for Captain Marvel too it does, that, man. Mm-hmm. It does. I mean, again, I, Cause I was kind of sleeping on Captain Marvel. I was kind of like, yeah. eh. First one was was solid, but you know, yeah. they didn't I mean, really, I really don't know what the second one is going. Yeah, I mean, I no really, idea. I'm really invested now in Monica. Like, I think that yeah. they this was a great introduction to her character. You know, because I think that I had seen some people say that you know, why should I care about Monica and Rambo? I've seen, I saw that on, I've seen it online a couple of times. I feel like this scene, this this episode made you want to care. Uh, her, her, and I think, her connection I, and I to think sword, that's why. the legacy behind that, it, how much of a badass she is. I think that's part of the reason I mean, why. Yeah. I think part of the reason why they, they, they announced that she was Monica Rambeau is because they want to uh, they wanna generate hype for Captain Marvel 2. And, right. like, I mean, I feel like they could have announced going to be in Captain Marvel 2, like, this week. But I think they yeah. wanted to, like, they wanted you to know after this episode... Next time you're gonna see her, it's Captain Marvel too. Yeah, and I, I'm sure, like you know, just to keep it like, you know, completely like open, like you know, you don't want to say, oh, this person's gonna survive this. Like, I mean, we, the, I mean, I don't think anyone's expecting Monica Rambo to die, Rambo to die. But you know, I think I do think that like that was probably a little bit like, oh, should we be saying someone's gonna appear in a movie when you know they're in a life or death situation this week? Like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> right. Like, like to me, and and, and one thing on Monica, like. I feel like, like to me, the fact that she survived to me is probably because she probably has some newfound powers. Like, because to me, I was that's what I was thinking. So I was like, how does anybody survive that? Like, that wasn't. Yeah, like I don't a, even know what happened. Because remember, she fell from she fell from a long. It, forget about what happened in the in the fake world. When she fell out of the real world, I mean, that was a that was 50, 60 feet at least. Like that wasn't no yeah, yeah. little thing. So like, that wasn't something that's easy to survive. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, you know, it could be something there. Maybe, maybe it's just Marvel. I don't know, but it, it was it was interesting. Uh, if this was if this was yeah. our if this was our origin story to uh, to uh, Photon, I, I'm I'm on board. That's that's why that's what I'm saying here. Um, but no, nah, this was this was a good episode. I'm excited to talk about more next week. What did you guys think of episode four of uh, WandaVision? We interrupt this program. Make sure you leave a comment. In the comment section, if you enjoyed this discussion, make sure you give us a like. And if you uh, love this content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, New Generation Media. Again, we're almost halfway there. Nine episodes of WandaVision. This is our third recap. Of, this is a fourth episode of WandaVision. So we'll be back every week with these uh, recaps. Thank you guys so much for checking this out. For Kendall, I'm EJ. Take it easy, guys. Peace.